Hello and welcome to Miami Intermodal Center on the east side of Miami International Airport. Today we are going to be riding to downtown Fort Lauderdale with Tri-Rail's commuter service. Before we get started, I just want to say a huge thank you for 1,000 subscribers. This is a huge milestone and I couldn't have done it without you. I have thoroughly enjoyed the grind to get here and I can't wait to see what the future holds for this channel. I plan on doing some really cool trips in the future and potentially including some international adventures, so there's plenty to look forward to in the coming months. Before we can get our journey started, we need a train, and it doesn't take long for one to show up. Tri-Rail Train P623 is finishing up its southbound journey from Magnolia Park on the north side of West Palm Beach. We don't have long before our train departs, so let's get a move on. Tickets for Tri-Rail are available from the many kiosks around the station. Tri-Rail is a part of the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, and thus uses the Easy Card for tapping on and off of trains. Said Easy Cards can also be used on Metro Rail and Metro Bus services, and can be reloaded like most Metro cards. After grabbing our tickets, it's time to hop aboard and find a seat for our quick trip up to Fort Lauderdale. I opted for the second car in our train today as the first car was getting rather busy. And of course, I had to sit on the second level because who can resist such a great view? Seeing as there was apparently no one else in this car, I decided to sit at a table so I had some extra space. Seating on Tri-Rail is pretty standard for commuter trains. The table sits about 8 inches from my torso, and there's plenty of space beneath the table to stretch out, though I wouldn't go too far if you're sitting across from someone. There are grab handles in between the seats and along the aisle to aid in entrance and egress. Between each seat is an armrest that folds down and has a bit of padding which is nice. The seats themselves aren't too comfortable. There's some decent padding on the back and bottom of the seats, but the seating position is rather upright, so it's hard to get comfortable on longer journeys. Below the table in this row are two outlets for passenger convenience. Despite their existence, you have to really be looking for them to know that they're there, as the only indication of them is the small safety placard that gets obstructed by the table. After getting seated, our train pulls out of the station to begin our quick 49-minute journey to Fort Lauderdale. As our train pulls out of the station, let's take a quick look at some stats about our train. Our train this morning is Tri-Rail Train P626 and consists of four Hyundai Rotem bi-level coaches powered by EMD F40 PHM-3C locomotive number 809. Each F40 PHM is powered by EMD's 645 V16 engine, producing 3,000 horsepower. Each locomotive is rated for a top speed of 110 miles per hour, but Tri-Rail operates their fleet at 80 miles per hour. Locomotive 809 was originally retired in 2015, but was then rebuilt into its current 3C spec with upgraded electronics and components, returning to service in 2020. If you're enjoying the video so far, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. And hit that bell icon while you're at it so you never miss another video. A welcome amenity on board Tri-Rail's fleet is free Wi-Fi. The speeds are actually fairly respectable for free Wi-Fi on board, reaching a peak of 1.6 megabits per second.
TriRail's current line serves stations from Miami International Airport to West Palm Beach, but they lack a connection to downtown Miami. That is all set to change in the next year or so, as TriRail will be expanding service to Brightline's Miami Central Station with the Downtown Miami Link. The expansion will see southbound trains branch off from the main line at the Metro Rail Transfer Station to head east and then south into the heart of Downtown Miami. TriRail trains will share the tracks with Brightline trains from 71st Street into Downtown, and will use tracks 4 and 5 at Miami Central. Hyundai Rotem bi-levels are fairly standard commuter cars, but it's still worth taking a look around to see what TriRail has to offer. The bottom level holds larger luggage racks and additional seating, which is to be expected. A welcome addition next to the bathroom door is a water station so passengers can stay hydrated, although it's clearly running out of pressure. Now it's time to take a step into the bathroom. The bathrooms on board are rather large, as to accommodate wheelchairs. The sink is functional, but there's no soap, which is a bit annoying. There was, however, a hand sanitizer dispenser on the wall to make up for that. The bathroom could certainly have used a good clean and maybe even a new coat of paint, but for a commuter service, it does the job. Though this is a smaller commuter line, it's still no stranger to top speed, with operational track speeds of up to 80 miles per hour. As the Florida scenery whipped by, I decided to take a look at an individual row of seats. Seating here is again fairly standard. There really isn't a lot of room here, with about 3 inches between my knees and the next row, but the small indent in the back of the seat does help. Like all of the other rows on this train, there's a grab handle between the seats and along the aisles. TriRail's fleet also includes armrests in all rows, a welcome addition for both comfort and personal space. The individual rows, however, are missing outlets along the walls. Clearly Hyundai Rotem is capable of putting outlets here, as they are at the tables, but why they chose not to put them everywhere is a little strange. The penultimate station on our journey today is the city of Dania Beach, Fort Lauderdale Airport Station. What's particularly interesting about this station is the distinct track-sized gap between the station awnings and the light posts for Track 1, indicating that there were likely three tracks at some point. The station was rebuilt in 2000, and the main station building wraps around to cap off this theoretical track at the north end of the platform. This indicates that it must have been a terminus track, and a recent one at that, but I can't find any evidence of this being the case. If anyone has any information on this, leave a comment down below as I would love to find out more about this phantom track. Just after our journey time hit 45 minutes, our train pulled into Fort Lauderdale Station. And with that, it's time to end today's video. Firstly, I just want to say again a huge thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I know it doesn't feel like a lot, but it's the first big milestone, and your support will help me continue to make more awesome videos in the future. Next week, I'll be back in New York City to check out Moynihan Train Hall at Penn Station. From there, we'll take a quick ride back to Jamaica and on to JFK with the Long Island Railroad and the JFK Air Train as we prepare to head back to Austin. If you want to be around when more videos get posted, do hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. If you liked the video, drop it a like too. Likes help push my content to more awesome viewers like you, and the more people who like my content, the more trips I can take in the future. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.